The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed. I'm Ken Napsuck, and this is another edition of Star Wars Rank. Me and a guest, and that guest is here now. It's Joseph Scrimshaw. Hello, I'm a guest. <laughs> it's always the way we're. We are guests on each other's show on our on our feed. We, we co- are created with Jennifer, and it's a, it's a weird. But you are a guest. We made up a whole thing. We're, yeah. It's a thing. Uh, this is a great edition of Star Wars Rank. Great. Am I saying our, our show's going to be great? And the show's not even over. Yeah, I just know. Yeah, I know what's coming, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this today. We're going to be taking a look at the best of the power of the Force Two Star Wars figure line. Oh, it's going to be great. We're going to dive into that, Joseph. This oh, is yes. It's been a while since we looked at uh, figures or toys in Force Center, though we yeah. talk about it. We talk about we action figures. Yeah. yeah, we don't dive in. This yeah. is And this is so close to my heart. I'm so excited. This is going to be a good one, and uh, which is why I also want to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. They're a good one. Get a free audiobook download today and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Force Center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Again, it's audibletrial.com slash Force Center. Uh, each week, Joseph, we always like to recommend uh, kind of a theme here. Uh, we recommend an audiobook. And this week, we, we chose Thrawn Alliances yeah. by Timothy Zahn. Yeah. You are enjoying that so far. Uh, yeah, th- yeah. Uh, the uh, Thrawn Alliances uh, and the Thrawn Treason is oh, the new Thrawn one. Treason. Yeah, yeah, Thrawn yeah, Treason yeah. is the new one, but get, yeah, go, go listen to Thrawn Alliances. Get all caught up. Get ready for treason with alliances. And do that <laughs> on us at audibletrial.com slash Force Center. All right, the power of the force too. We're, we're going to have our rank, but I think we need to talk a little bit about this. Yes, figure line. Uh, this this was what we're talking about today is 1995 through 2000. Yeah. Now, Phantom Menace figures came out in 99, not part of that line, but it definitely changed the line. Yeah, and it, 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 they they were very similar. They're not technically a part of the line, yeah. but like look, design. Even down to the card style. Yes. You know they're very very similar. Yeah. Now. It could not be understated, understated what the 1995 first wave meant to Star Wars fans. No. This was big stuff, Joseph. This was insanely huge. This is the, you know, one of those, uh, Star Wars means different things to you based on your point of view. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you had the exact same experience. I think a similar one. Mm-hmm. But to me, growing up, those Kenner figures were everything. Yeah. And then Star Wars went away. And yep. I dreamt of what if someday... <laughs> I mean, they have the molds. Couldn't they just reprint them? Or what if they ever made more? What if they made the characters that I've always dreamed they would have made, but never did? What if they made those other variations of Luke and Han's outfit? What if they did that? It was in this nerd culture we currently live in where every dream you have eventually becomes a reality. Every superhero will have a TV show or movie, no matter how obscure. (laughs) This was, in my life experience, the first time Mm -hmm. a huge nerd dream became a reality it is yeah. hard to overstate how important in my star wars fandom this specific line of action figures was yeah. because it was that it was the joy of your childhood is back and you can experience in it now yeah. as an adult and in a different way but the magic is back it, it was the first big play on nostalgia in a, in a like, you're going to spend money on this, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you can't over, I don't think you can't, can't overlook that or deny that, but it was in such a powerful way because, you know, years, years talk about the dark ages. And I was just watching a couple wonderful YouTube videos today from uh, toy galaxy, Dan Larson. I think he does great stuff and pixel Dan does great stuff. And then they did a crossover on the power oh. of the force video. I highly recommend them. Um, but, uh, they, we all talk about the dark ages and the toys went away and after 85 and it was kind of this weird uh, thing in the past. A lot of pop culture was a thing yeah. in the past, but by the early nineties, just a couple years later. And when you look back, but it, it was a big gap. The Bendems, the Star Wars Bendems come around yeah. and they're silly, but that's not what we wanted. Yeah. And I got so excited. Cause yeah. like, what, why? Yeah. Why go so close? Why go to so heaven close. when you could? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the rumors by the, you know, I graduated high school in 94 and I'm going to, to start uh, study screenwriting and everything in a community college nearby my hometown of Santa Maria, California, uh, Hancock College. And uh, rumors of, you know, that's when some of the new magazines were coming out, like George is writing some Star Wars and oh, we might get and yeah. these big rumors were coming yeah. in the middle of that. Again, no YouTube, no Internet. You get some 
oh, you know, Toys R Us is going to start carrying Star Wars toys. It was a countdown to this release day. Yeah. For me, and particularly my friend Joel Trudgeon, we went to school together and uh, moved to L.A. together a few years later. And we had a Toys R Us near our college. And we would go over and get the WWE classic figures and all that kind of stuff. And that day, we were like, oh, we're, we're running over. Yeah. And it was, boom, like kids in the candy store, day of Christmas, wall of Star Wars figures. Oh, that's it amazing. amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. And then we started pulling them off the shelves and going, well, they've worked out. <laughs> They're a little buff. Does that look like Leia? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I did not even care about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I was tuned into it. I would stop mm-hmm. in the Target toy aisle all the time, mm-hmm. and I think they sold out so much, I think I saw mm-hmm. empty racks. and was like, it says Star Wars. Yeah. Are those Bendoms really <laughs> popular? Is that what happened? Who's buying and Bendoms? And then I finally, I think toward the end of 95, I was yeah. in college as well. Yeah. I, you know, I went there one day, and, you know, there. I think, like, there was, like, a Chewie on the shelf, and that was it. Oh, wow. And uh, it was the Christmas of 95, I believe it was. My brother's girlfriend at the time gave me the new Vader. Oh, and yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't get to them until that. And then I was like, oh, man, I'm going to stock you know, <laughs> those shelves, not stock them as in put things on yeah. them. I'm going to hunt them, <laughs> uh, you know, and I stopped at every target, every yeah. Kmart, uh, all the time. And, and for the years of this run of, of power of the force, mm-hmm. it became just a huge part of my life of yeah. daydreaming about who would they put out next, yeah. you know, and the figures just kept getting better and better in this yeah. short period of time to where you get to 97, 98 they are still, to my mind, amazing figures. Oh, yeah. So you got the nostalgia, and then you got, just like Star Wars, you got the new. You got yeah. the progression of quality. Progression of quality, and uh, they needed to, and that's part of what's going to be on my list. And look, there's a lot of choices. Joseph and I are going to be choosing our five favorite figures each, as some honorable mentions, but there are a lot of choices. And also, I think you and I experienced the same thing. One, I was like, oh, I'm definitely putting that down. And I looked it up, and I was like, that came out in 2002. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of fun ones from the Power of the Jedi series, yes. which was, yeah, right after Phantom Menace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mid-2000s, before, you know, Black Series took over and everything, mid-2000s, there's some really good figures, an yeah. underrated time uh, for figures. But we are talking about the Power of the Force 2, because in, what is it, 845, the Power of the Force 1 was yes. out there. You get those little medallions. That's my Imperial Gunner that I still have. He came from that <laughs> line. Uh, 1995 to 2000, this is our list five. We're starting, Joseph, with your number five. My number five is Ponda Baba, mm. a.k.a. Mm. used to be Walrus Man. Uh, I wanted to start with one that was an action figure, a character that they had produced previously, but yeah. not one of them, you know, main characters uh, uh, like Buff Luke with his extra long lightsaber. Mm. Uh, but one of these characters that showed the growth and the change in Star Wars. So mm. it was the nostalgia of I get to buy Walrus Man again, but... What the hell? His name is Ponda Baba. Yeah. Now, a lot of these names I know now came from that West End Games role-playing game. Right. But this was the first time that I discovered this extra level of nerdery mm. is from these figures. Some of my obsession with getting to know these species mm. in the name of Star Wars characters came from collecting these action figures. Right. And Ponda Baba was like... What a weird name. He's not Walrus yeah. Man. I understand. He probably doesn't. That yeah. sounds mean to just call it. Your head looks like a walrus. You're yeah. Walrus Man. Yeah. Great. Have some respect. He's Ponda Baba. <laughs> He's an aqualish from the planet Ando. Have some respect. Yeah. Uh, and I always loved that Walrus Man as a kid, but like, He's wearing bright orange and has flippers for feet because yeah. nobody knew what his feet looked like. So not only is there like the new of mm. like the name of who is he, yeah. but he's cooler looking, right? Because his, his jacket, yes. he's got an actual jacket, jacket instead of just like a weird onesie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the weird original onesie. Kenner Wal- Walrus Man has a onesie uh, and he doesn't have <laughs> flipper feet. He's got boots, yeah. comes with a blaster. And you think, you respect Pone to Baba now. <laughs> You shall yeah. respect yeah. him. Yeah, so he, he, he's he got to make my list because he's one of the best examples for me mm-hmm. of uh, get to revisit an old figure, but there's so much new about this character, yeah. and it's, it, it uh, is a great example of diving deeper into creating this galaxy and making it real. It, for me, too, felt like this was, um, uh, you know, 
the counter line, Walrus Man and everything, they're looking in the background and who can we make a figure of? Yep. Who can we put in the hands of the children? This line is the one that felt like we are getting this right for the fans who've grown up with it. Yes. And you're going to, and that's why some of the ones we'll talk about, like, oh, finally, and oh, great, we needed, and that it was an example of like, oh, this is, they're not just going deep, like it's now respectful like you said but it's this is this is the galaxy you love these are the characters you love you now know them and you're going to collect them now you can collect them all yeah, yeah. loved it ponda baba ponda baba i still remember though kind of pushing back being like his name was walrus man <laughs> what are you talking about oh, i was so happy to see ponda and, baba and that's hammerhead don't call me <laughs> <Mobanda>. yeah. <laughs> all right my number that's your number five my 95 my, my <laughs> number five is from 1995 and leia and yes this is the, quote, dog face layer, the monkey face layer, all, all these bad things there. But I'm choosing this because it stood out as it was not good. Now, yeah. she's got her action pose. she got her gun. And I think this inspired collectors to demand more. Yeah. And to get more from the figures and to get Leia right. And I think it's still brought up as this, you can't just sneak this over the shelves to collectors and be like, yeah, you want a Leia, right? You got to get it right. Yeah. You got to be respectful of these characters uh, and the people played them. And, you know, as Carrie would say, you look in the mirror, I have to give George $2, but... Um, <laughs> maybe not for that action figure because it was not her likeness. Not her, yeah, maybe not it. <laughs> and, and you know, look, the Kenner figures aren't accurate. <laughs> you know, blobs of plastic with dots on their eyes. <laughs> but in, in, this was the modern era of toy making and toy collecting. It be, kind of begins around this era and it's inspirational in a way. And it, it, it inspired change, uh, per- yeah. particularly with these uh, the Leia figures. And, and she's the only, you know, the, the, the only female character the big, t- the big time. Others come, and, and this line uh, introduces uh, more female characters and more female figures. But, you know, it's Leia, man. It's yeah. Leia. And you got to get, it, get right. it right. And you got one uh, the female character in this first wave, and it doesn't even look like her. It's now an insult. And I think that inspired some change. And that sometimes uh, is what happens. There's a there's a very famous match in the world of pro wrestling was uh, one of the, the women's matches that was insultingly short, disrespectful, 30-second, two-minute, maybe three-minute all-told match. And that spawned the fans to go, no, we want more to the company that was putting it out. Oh, that's great. And that led to the women's revolution in wrestling and all this kind of stuff. I really do think this figure was that. I think you held it in your hands and you went, this isn't right. And that's why it's got to make my list uh, as an inspirational figure. Yeah, I think that's I, I think that's a great one uh, to point out because that whole that whole f- very first line it's it's the classics from A New Hope, right? Mm-hmm. But it's also just I, I think another great reminder of the time where we think that maybe people will buy these. There's not even a new movie out. The, right. the you know special editions are going to be released in a couple of years, but will they buy them? Like. Yeah, people like their action figures to be buff. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So Luke's shirt is going to be open, and he mm. is going to be just yeah. ripped. And then I, I, he's like, "Yeah, that's not right, but I don't care. It's Star Wars." Yeah. Like that was yeah, yeah. I, the level I think of sort of starvation. Right. That they're able to get away with that, and then obviously they weren't. They didn't quite do that to Leia, but they made her cape. And her dress kind of big and flowing, yeah. so it kind of looks like she's like she's, trying to make herself look larger yeah. to scare a bear or something. <laughs> uh, but still, I didn't care. She came yeah. with two blasters. She had a big old assault uh, rifle type blaster as yeah. well as her sporting blaster. But I still didn't care. Uh, got her. Got two copies of her. Absolutely, absolutely. So number five, nineteen ninety five, Leia. Yeah, inspired to change. All Inspiring right. change. That's a good one. We got uh, Panda Bob. We got Leia. What is your number four? My number four is one of the versions of Luke that I uh, had always dreamed of as a child. Mm. Uh, when I was a kid, loved Bespin Luke. I finally got on my birthday. I got the Dagobah playset, and I got a battle damaged X wing mm-hmm. where you could put stickers. Oh yeah, battle damage on it, but, and I was always like, "Yeah, this is the." He still has the uh, X wing he blew up the Death Star with, and it's, it, you know, so I love that. And then I always was like, "Well, there's a battle damaged X wing. Shouldn't there be a battle damaged Luke Skywalker where you can take his hand off?" Yeah, yeah. And so uh, my number four is that Bespin Luke. Mm. By then they'd added the little freeze frames, uh, 
but he's got the removable hand. And I always thought of him as battle damage Luke Skywalker. (laughs) I always wanted that. Uh, And the best man, Luke, in in some ways, has been a huge, huge favorite of Luke. Uh, They did the surprise veer when they introduced the beginning of the Empire line that they did Dagobah Luke with his uh, with his jacket off. By the time they got to making Bespin, they realized we don't need to do the buff thing. Mm-hmm. So he is like, to this day, to me, I think one of the best molds right. of Bespin Luke. He looks absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily photorealistic, but his face absolutely evokes right. Mark Hamill in that era. Comes with his great blaster. Comes with the beautiful blue, perfect lightsaber. Yeah. And you can remove his hand <laughs> to recreate your favorite father son moment in all of film. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love when, when dreams of, of, of children become realities, which meant, you know, someone else probably had that dream and got in a position to create that, you know, yeah. make it out. Yeah, there's a lot of that, uh, uh, you know, certain video games. They're like, why can't I manage a baseball team? Yeah. Oh, guess now but what I'm wasting my life doing at 43. Um, yeah, why can't I play poker in this Western? Yeah, well, you can. Yeah. I didn't do it, but I'm sure there was kids out there who probably took any Luke figure they had as a child and chopped his hand off. Oh, yeah. You know, get some mom's scissors and cut it off or whittle it away with a pocket knife. There. Yeah. So to actually have it is pretty powerful. Bespin Luke, I got, you know, Bespin Luke's underrated overall because you got Jedi Luke that stands the test time as perhaps the greatest counter figure. And yeah. Then, and just cool and black and green, and and he's you know and he's in a utilitarian flight suit under under flight under pants or whatever you want yeah. to say for the suit. Um, no underpants, Luke is different. You can get that figure. Um, <laughs> Not a part of the port- no, power of the force line. Yeah, yep. so otherwise, Bakta Tank Luke would be. Uh, and it it it, it 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 deserves respect. And you're, I was looking at uh, I have the one of the books that has the figure archives. Uh, might be a sweet, sand sweet one. I think. Oh, nice. Um, and I was looking this morning. I was like, oh, that Luke looks. The face looks like Mark screaming no. That's impossible. Yeah, it's a great mold. Yeah, uh, yeah. But from all of the the Lukes, uh, you know, at one point in when I was making this list, almost every version of Luke was was on this. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm such a Luke Skywalker guy. But I grew up the you know with Empire being such a big deal in my life and thinking about Bespin Luke that to have a Bespin Luke this beautiful with a removable hand, life changing, life changing indeed. Love that. It's your number four. My number four going to 1997. We finally get him. Governor Moff Willif Tarkin. Nice. We didn't know his name was Willif then. <laughs> Not yet revealed. But here we finally get it. Tarkin. He's a little buff, but as we've learned recently in the Marvel comics, he he, he does he did his push-ups. Oh yeah. Um comes with a blaster. And this is where I say the power of the force line, you can say ah, the buff line, ah, the, the layer they got wrong, all the stuff. This is when, much to like your Panda Baba. They're going, yeah, we're aware that a Tarkin wasn't released. Yeah. And we're not just correcting it. We're, we're, we're respectfully adding it to your experience as a Star Wars collector. Tarkin arrived. I still think it's it's really silly, but watching the toys that made us doc or any, any doc you watch about the Kenner line, I, I get that they were just like, what are the cool weird creatures in the background? Yeah. We have an Imperial officer or some stormtrooper. No one's going to care about the the old dude yeah running the admin uh, <laughs> meetings at, at the death star and then it, it's tarkin man so it grew in popularity and then they still didn't correct it though yeah i think by 85 you could have you know but they absolutely. didn't absolutely this was the one we got and i liked that he was he was fierce he was it looked a little younger than he did in new hope and that blaster was like oh tarkin what yeah at some point he would have held a blaster yeah i just love it yeah, I think Tarkin, him being missing from the original line, uh, is one of the most obvious main characters to be missing. Mm-hmm. And then coming back from Power of the Force, where they really started going, what are the, all the figures that we could have made that we didn't back yeah. in the day? He, he, such a great example of like, oh, when marketing companies were saying collect them all, we were meaning buy everything that we put out. Right. We didn't realize that you, the buyer, actually meant <laughs> no. If they've been on the film, yeah. we want to own them. We don't care if it's an old man who just tells Darth Vader things at a business meeting. Right. We want to buy him. Yeah. You know, if there's a single frame of the film where Han's jacket is ruffled a different way, we would like to <laughs> buy that action figure. And Tarkin is such a great symbol mm-hmm. of the, the I think, the leader of that idea of like, no, we mean collect them all. Yeah. It's that era of fandom. We're the ones, we grew up with this. Now we want to fully experience it. Yeah. Uh, there should be a theme park called, called Galaxy's Edge <laughs> later on. 
And this is the start over there. So that's why it's my number four, which means we're up to your number three. Uh, my number three uh, goes with that. Yes, any small moment we want to collect, any small variation on the classic figures. And for me, it's a it kind of a celebration of, you know, especially back then when I was buying mm-hmm. a lot of these, that I had a recognition that this is really fulfilling. It brings me lots of joy. It is costing me a lot of money. It is a little absurd. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was still a time where there was a lot of, nerd shaming so yeah. people who would come to my home and see the walls covered mm. in action would be like okay mm-hmm. uh, you've made a life choice mm-hmm. so i like to try to have a sense of humor about it yeah and a couple of the ones that amused me in their specificity of like mm. th- there's no way that would ever be made right, right. so I, I i cheated and, and paired two together uh, one is uh, Bush's Bounty Chewbacca <laughs> where he has the chain is not an accessory yeah. the chain is Connected, connected to his neck and he's got the bangs the return of the jedi yes. bangs we talk about yes. so much this is an action figure that is just from that one mm. scene like and you look at chewy yeah and you go uh, how, how are you gonna make variations of chewbacca yeah. and they come along and like there's some other ones like snow covered chewbacca mm-hmm. from hoth but like this one is bush's bounty <laughs> bush bouch bush uh the bounty with the chewy bangs so yeah. very exciting uh, and then to pair with that, there's the there was the uh, Jabba's Palace 3D display diorama, mm-hmm. which the, the actual diorama, it, whatever, not yeah. that amazing. But it came with half on frozen Han Solo. So right. it had the carbonite block with a Han Solo indent in it, not the full one. But the action figure of Han is what I loved is he has the slightly damp mm. shirt, white shirt with brown stains and then his face has like literally from a couple seconds of film of like his eyebrows <laughs> are both kind of moving upward and yeah. his mouth is like kind of like what's happening to me a little bit of that. It's yeah. it's the exact second that yeah. he's coming out of the carbon freezing. And you think about that action figure from a perspective of play. Yeah. Like you only need that action figure for a second. You got your Han frozen in carbonite because they, they they made that, that too. Yep. Uh, and then you're like, oh, now he's out. <laughs> but wait, but in between, <laughs> in between, right in between, he looks like this. They're making figures off of frames. Making figures off of frames, and I just thought that was so great. It's from that moment, half on frozen Han Solo. I love those moments. I mean, bangs Chewbacca is uh, yeah. Is, is, it's always been one of my favorite things, and to have that there, and uh, that's that's you know that's yeah. why I still want you know I want uh, Luke drinking the green milk from Last Jedi. It's yeah. in his beard. I want to get back to this moment of those seconds. <laughs> Frothy beard, Luke. Frothy beard, Luke. Please, <laughs> Black Series. That's the one we need to vote for. Yeah. Frothy beard, Luke. <laughs> Love that. Those are great choices for your number three. Good pairing there. Uh, well, I'm gonna you know uh, add a couple figures to this one, but really it's just the the concept for my number three. Going to 1998 and the purchase of the droids playset. Yes. Uncle Owen barters for the droids. Now you too can barter. <laughs> so you do have to get a Jawa figure separately, the Jawa 2-pack. Um, look, there's there's nothing new about this. Kenner, in, in mining the the possibilities, uh, gave us some of the real cheap little playsets, the droid building facility or whatever, that, and they... The little mini rigs, all those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of a weird service tradition. But again, done differently. The vibe was different. Yeah. The kids are buying these off the shelves. Give them this plastic thing and we'll cut. This was different. This is recognized that this is part of their screen uh, the series. Cinema scenes. Cinema scenes. Which are funny. Even Funko Pop does that. Where, you know, here's the, the escape pod and 3 pr yeah. 2 And it's like, we love that. Much to your point. Figures off of frames. This is sequences that are inspiring. And Uncle Owen, one of those guys, uh, one of the characters that did not get a Kenner line. Mm-mm. Again, considering as much as what they put out, I, I get it might be a little boring. Moisture Farmer. They would have just would have even called it Uncle Owen. Yeah. Moisture Farmer would have been the figure. Old guy who doesn't look do <laughs> let Luke do fun things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Action figure. Grumpy guy. My inspiration. Um, so now we need an Uncle Owen. And this is the first one we get. And he's doing what he does best bartering for droids. I think he's got his hand up with, the, <laughs> yes. he, he, with real yelling action. Yeah, uh, you got a Luke, you got a couple droids with it there. Um, again, no Jawas, you need to buy that, collect them all, put them together, and now we're now we're in this era of, oh, we're, we're, you're not just a kid playing with them. You, you need to collect your memories. Yeah, yeah. 
man, that's a great one. That was on my list. The cinema scenes were yeah. a big deal for me. The cinema scenes were the first thing that I actually managed to collect them all because I loved them so oh, much. Wow, yeah. I was going to get all of them. And awesome. they're in a storage unit, but I still have them all. Yeah. I believe the first one was the Escape the Death Star. Right. It's got Luke and Han in a uh, Stormtrooper disguise. Right. Which, you know, you can't even tell it's Luke and Han, but I bought that because there'd never been a Han. No. Right. And I didn't get the Luke uh, in Stormtrooper disguise yeah. that, that Kenner put out at the end of their line. So I wanted to collect them all. This one was amazing because it was Uncle Owen. Yeah. And I think they didn't yet have the faith that even these insane collectors would buy right. a single card, Uncle Owen. Right. And if I'm remembering correctly, that was once they had slimmed down the characters, that was the first time you could get that Luke that looked actually oh, like yeah, a, yeah. a new modern mold of mm-hmm. the time that looked like Luke as he did not Luke <laughs> on space steroids. Like yeah. the first one, he wasn't power released. lifting. He was doing CrossFit. Or yeah. Least, uh, yeah, yeah. So I remember being super excited for that. Cause I got to get it. Cause it's uncle Owen and look at that Luke. Damn. Mm-hmm. Now eventually they put that yeah. general kind of Luke on card a bunch, yeah. but man, that was amazing. Good set. That's why it's my number three, which means we're up to our number two, starting with yours. Uh, my number two is another one that I I think I half dreamed of, but this was like, the, mm. it, it, don't even dare to dream. Uh, and this is a Darth Vader with the removable helmet. Oh, yeah. With the uh, Sebastian Shaw oh, yeah, burnt yeah, face yeah, yeah. Any, anywhere. And part of that was, this is so cool, because mm-hmm. it was a, a good Vader figure. And again, this was right on the cusp of, like, they really slimmed them down. They were starting to make the figures look better. Right. So not only was it a new mold of Vader that didn't have him muscly, mm. you could truly play that scene of having the helmet come off and also just appreciating that the technology had got so good that that little helmet fit mm. perfectly over his head yeah. and he looked like an awesome Darth Vader and you could have a friend over if you wanted, which I did, <laughs> and say, look at my Darth Vader action figure. Surprise! Surprise. <laughs> you can't tell. It's Anakin under there and it's a great sculpt awesome. of uh of anakin mm-hmm. and like here, here's the whole truth of that character in one figure well it's funny you talk about how you know with chewbacca how do you make different chewbacca's how do you make different vaders yeah you know other than the years change and the technology but it's still the dude in the cape and the mask but this is one of the ways yeah and i'll tell you what i i think i have a vader from every line ever released uh take that back i probably don't um, but I, 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 over the years, especially mid two thousands, they release a lot. I buy it. I'd be in a toy aisle. Oh, yeah. I need it. I need it. And I just have these Vaders cause even though it's the same, Still I just like cool. to see how they put it out there and the yeah. design gets more intricate and all that kind of thing. And this is one of the big changes. It's yeah. just like, oh yeah. And then it's like, you get to, as, as a collector, now you get to play with it and reenact the Veer scene if you want or everything, but just like, oh, this is the science of it. This is how yeah. it actually works. Is that actually moves on and off. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe his hand was removable too. So you could also get the like, well, like oh, father, like son. He <laughs> is messed up there. Number two, number two. That's great. Uh, a removable helmet Vader. My number two is going back to 1995. This is the biker scout with speeder. Yeah. Ken gets his wish. Now, of course, they had released a speeder during the counter line uh, and, and, a, and a scout trooper. But this was, I remember, I have two. I bought two of them. So you could take one out of the package? No, no. So I could have oh. both out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, pl- and set up a little scene. And they exploded. Yes. And they came with the bow-legged scout trooper to sit on it. And I just remember thinking, it's so funny when you're, you know, even now, like we're looking at Black Series figures, like how could they get better? You know, who knows what they're going to come out with yeah. 10 years from now. In 1995, I'm going, oh, they've done it. They have totally made the best toy ever. Yeah. It's an explodable uh, speeder bike, and it looks so detailed, and it's <laughs> big. And now like, I'm staring up at my Black Series one that's above me, and now, it, you know, and who knows? You can get different versions. But at the time, I, as a Biker Scout fan and a speeder bike fan, just remember holding this and going, well, I need two, number one, so let me take my hard-earned money to get that. No Taco Bell tonight for me. Yeah. And just thinking, like, this is Star Wars in my hand. This is the, what, kind of what I envisioned, uh, like you talk about as a kid, but even like, yeah, I know the one Kenner one, but they could do it better. Yeah. And they did it better in 1995 with this one, so I love it. Yeah, they did. You know, and I think b- part of the power of uh, this particular line mm-hmm. is, like, I look up at your your mm-hmm. Black Series one, and it is an amazing toy, mm-hmm. but it is explicitly made for collectors. Yes. And you could look at it and just go, that's a statue. Mm-hmm. These were still, these were being made for collectors, but kids were buying them too, is they yeah. rediscovered 
uh, the movie through the special editions right. and all that. They were still toys. Yeah. And they still looked like toys, but they were on that line of heading toward the idea of real adult collectability. Yes. It's, it's, but they, they rode that, that mm-hmm. line really well. Yeah, there was no doubt I was gonna I'm taking these out of the box. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. I uh, got two I, of almost everything. Because I back. wanted to see them explode. <laughs> so with number two down for each of us, we're going to go to some honorable mentions here. There's, again, a lot to choose from. A lot yeah. to choose from. Uh, what are some of the ones on your list? Uh, I added the cinema scene of the Minoc hunt. Oh, yes. Which will yes. always be close to my heart uh, because I had, uh, I've talked about this other places, probably here on Force Center. I had a, I think it was like maybe a couple weeks uh, I had a temp job shrink wrapping knives <laughs> where it. it was an assembly line where I'd pick out the <laughs> knives, take the sheath off and stick them in a block and then put that whole block of <laughs> loose knives and wood through a shrink wrapper. And I cut myself a lot <laughs> and it was boring. And I got through that whole thing by <laughs> trying to guess what are the next cinema scenes they're going to release. Awesome. And, and it was always three characters. So it's like, what's a scene that they've never made that would be so amazing with three characters? And it's like, oh, they could be hunting for the Minox. Right. And the fact that they put it out and got a Minox in it. And, ah, oh, God. So Very great. Uh, so that's a runner up. Um, a later in the series, uh, Princess Leia, it, she comes with a freeze frame. Uh, and I think her kind of title is Princess Leia with Sporting uh, Blaster. Mm, yeah. Um, but she also has in, in E11. Right. Uh, and she just looks so great. It's just a great mold, exactly in that line. We're like, it's still a toy. It's still mm-hmm. an action figure, but it's heading towards that kind of collectability look. Uh, mm-hmm. And I got one of these uh, online for Sarah uh, years ago, and she has it displayed Oh yeah, in, yeah. in kind of her area right. uh, for her display. So that, that's, that one's close to my heart. Uh, that Spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi that was a mail order. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you could get that Spirit of Obi-Wan. Glad um, you put that there. Yeah. Garen Dan was one of those obscure, like, oh, who else could they make from the movie that they've never made? And yes. he was high on my list, so I was so happy that they made Garen I, Dan. I believe I have one. I'm in the process of moving, and I went to go. I was like, oh, I'm going to pull out my face. Oh, they're at the new house. Um, I had a Garen Dan. I think I had two. Yeah. I like that character. He's a cool, a lot. Yeah, he's a cool looking yeah. character with the weird, like, like plague what? mask type design. Good figure. Uh, my last one, because it's a celebration of, again, the utter specificity that I love. They made the Tatooine skiff. Mm-hmm. they hadn't made before yep. came with a unique Jedi Luke uh, and because it was before uh, he put the glove on he doesn't have a glove on mm-hmm. his hand and he has a blaster burn on his hand so you can yes. act out the moment that his mechanical hand gets shot but before he puts <laughs> a glove on and just that level of care yeah. for nerds Mm. It's the best. Yeah. Great list. Yeah, so those are some of my runner-ups. Honorable mentions for me include Biggs Darklighter because oh, yeah. it's not X-Wing Pilot anymore. It's Biggs Darklighter. And that's one of those, like, especially in the mid-90s, you're like, it's like a badge you're wearing on your, like, yeah. look at this. I got Come a, on. I Everybody got a knows Biggs. But I think I learned Darklighter from the action figure. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cinema scenes, the Jedi Rocks dancers. Oh, yeah. This is... My least favorite sequence in all Star Wars, right? <laughs> so, Ken, why would you put it here? Because even though it's my least favorite scene in all of Star Wars, thank you, George, for those special editions. Love you, George. Um, I would still want to own this. Yeah. Because it's just crazy to me. It's like, insane. It's insane that yeah. they have this. I'm like, yeah, I need that. I need, I need that. that. I don't have it yet. I'll have to get it. Uh, Mon Mothma, because oh, Mon yeah. finally gets a figure. Yeah. need that. Again, I, one of those ones I her face is almost designed like a Kenner figure. She's got the, the tight hair, uh, small, uh, you know, short hair. It's yeah. like, like, that's like that. You look like a Kenner figure. <laughs> um, uh, surprise. There wasn't one. So Mon Mothma, uh, lay on the speeder bike yeah. and Luke, but I love the lay on the speeder bike. Uh, you mentioned Hoth Chewy covered yeah. in snow. Yeah. That's so great. good. And the final one here, floppy hat Luke from the deleted scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Come on. Yeah. God, this is the detail we're getting. Yeah. Floppy hat Luke's and, pretty and, great. And the faith, especially in the mid-90s, to put that out and be like, um, you know, that delete. have you all seen the deleted scene? Here's the figure of it. Yeah. That's a different time to put that out there. With, it's amazing with to go from 95 to 98 from they won't buy them unless mm-hmm. Han Solo has an eight pack. Yeah. To, yeah, you, you know that deleted scene where he wears a floppy hat in just three years of yeah. production. 
and yeah. I think it's a real symbol of what is going to happen to Star Wars, what was going to happen to the whole genre world. Absolutely. So this is honorable mentions. I'm sure there's more. You guys can uh, tweet us your honorable mentions with pictures, if possible, of your own collection. But we're going to get to our number ones, and we're going to go to my number one so the guests can finish with uh, their number one. That's what we do here. And 1997, you're talking about the, the shift. 95, 96 to me is kind of similar, but 97, Tarkin's showing up. Love his characters. Ceremonial outfit Luke. This is Luke getting his medal. But more importantly, this is Luke in a different jacket. And a jacket we never really, uh, I, thunk, I think it's an underrated outfit. <laughs> it's amazing. It spawns a bunch of the looks that we have now. Yeah. You don't get Cassian Andor's awesome jacket without that jacket. We know jackets are important in Star Wars. And I just remember thinking, look, is this the best of the line? Is this uh, 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 one that uh, I raced out to get? No, but I remember seeing it and going, wow, they never made that. Yeah. And this is the spirit of the line to me, and it's a main character. There's Kenner, Luke Skywalker's coming out my ears. Um, but they didn't do that. They didn't, and, and now we're getting to everything you've talked about, the frames, the moments. The, he didn't have a glove on in this scene. Han's <laughs> mouth was slightly open because he was unframed. Well, no, now we, the, the Luke at the end, after he wins the day, you yeah. can finally have that figure, and that's why it's my number one. Yeah, it's a great number one. It's a great figure. It's a great look. And exactly what you're saying, it shows that like back in the day where they're like, I don't know what, which which background character we should make. Like, that's a major Luke Skywalker fashion look yeah. that you just assumed we wouldn't buy. And you were very, very wrong. Very wrong. <laughs> that's my number one, which means we're up to your number one Power of the Force 2 figure. My number one is one of the later figures, and it was one of the definitely, let's make a joke about a figure they would never make, mm. uh, and one that uh, absolutely fights against the word action in action figure, and it is Woo Hair. <laughs> Woo Hair, the surly bartender from A New Hope. I absolutely love that they made an action figure of him. It's a great figure. Yeah. Their accessory game was on point. He came with a drink and the droid detection unit. Right. So you could really recognize it and go, yep, that's that's what that is. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, just the fact that they made an action right. figure of the bartender. Droid detection unit. They did a damn good job of it. Is that Ooh, a droid? Hair. Let me grab my droid detection. <laughs> It's perfect. It's perfect for you. Uh, Wu Hair is someone I associate you with a lot. I <laughs> oh, thank know Wu Hair is, is a favorite of yours. And like like Baru with her blue milk, this is like, again, if you need, you've made a Wu Hair, you're going to need a drink. You're going to need it. The, the collectors demand this. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to have, you know, an action. Yeah. Going to be able to sling a drink. Is there, there's, um, I think I have someone got it for my birthday gift. It, it, it's it's uh, the Snaggletooth line. It's like it's it's a cinema scene from there. Yeah, it doesn't come. Where well, was a mail away? Right, it was a special. Yes. Now I was trying to remember this. I think I had signed up. You you yeah. You had to be a part of the uh, Star Wars Insider. Wasn't I think you couldn't get it. I might be wrong about this because I'm yeah. relying on yeah, memory. Yeah. I haven't looked this up. I think back in the day, that was when you had to be. Uh, had a subscription to Star Wars Insider. Yes. So I think I got the offer through that because I got a. I also got oh, the yeah. Best Bin playset, which was right. also exclusive. So I think it must have been because I was getting the Star Wars Insider magazine at that time. Oh, sorry, I was trying. I had a website up earlier. I must have shut it down. I had a list. Yeah, and it kind of explains where it was a little bit later too. It was one of the yeah, later figures. Yeah, I want to think that he is one of the ones that that yeah. just tipped into two thousand. Yeah, I think you're you're absolutely right there and. Uh, what a wonderful way. This is what the line achieved. This is what we wanted as collectors. And 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 it's just a short five years to go from the buff figures, which exactly you described. I mean, uh, that video I watched from Pixel Dan, I think it's the guy's name is Tom Hall, one of the designers of the line. It was like, yeah, they have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And this is what people were buying. We wanted to tap into that. But with Star Wars. So they're all doing push-ups. Like, yeah. to, to, to change uh, and, and the Leia that they got wrong. And they, they adapted. And I think in this modern era of sideshow and hot toys and black series and, and photo realism this line don't overlook it don't overlook it's it a yeah fun one. yeah and i mean my i know that black series is doing mm -hmm. great things you know i i will mm -hmm. always have this uh, allegiance obsession to just this straightforward basic three and three quarter line yeah. and you know i i dream of a day where they get back to the this spirit yeah. with that line of like what uh, what obscure character can we make? You know, I, and maybe the market doesn't support it now because it's yeah. more complex. And maybe I do have to go to the black series. But mm -hmm. to me, this was a a beautiful time when the just straightforward line mm -hmm. was super deep. 
absolutely. And, and, and it fosters this, this specific love of Star Wars. Going back again to the kettle line, because uh, I guess we'll make Snaggletooth and Hammerhead, and, and you could start, and Rebel Officer on Hoth, you could start to form connections with those characters based on the figures. Yeah. This is an expansion of that, and Wu Hair for you uh, is, is that guy, and for me too, but like, you know, that's like, oh my gosh, th- I like this guy. I could display it. I like Han. I like Luke. I like Vader. I like the bartender. <laughs> and that's part of what makes Star Wars so great. Yeah. And it's it's the standard bearer for our, all toys and, and worlds that, 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 you know, superheroes and the figures I think are great. And I know a lot of friends that collect them, but it's like, I don't know. Do they have the shield HR guy? Like, uh, they don't. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, they need to have that. Star Wars has that. And Will Hare is the perfect choice for number one on the Power of the Force 2 line. Um, Joseph, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I think we could do it again. I think we could look at the mid two thousands. Oh yeah, the the what did the Jedi line? Yeah, the power um, of the Jedi line. A lot of them. Black series. We've done. Uh, you know, we've had the Black series Rebels. The guys wanted to do the Black series ones. That that's always changing, always updating. We can. We're gonna do more. And and, yeah. and and as powerful as toys are here, we don't focus on it a lot on Force Center. It's part of our conversations, but to actually focus on it, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you, sir, for coming along and doing that. Oh, thank you for letting me just uh, spend more time than I probably <laughs> should have researching this episode and going down memory lane. It's a really special time for me as a Star Wars fan. Understood. And uh, you can follow Joseph uh, and his adventures uh, on his website and all those other places. Yeah, so website is josephsgrimshaw.com, Twitter and Instagram, just my name, at Joseph Scrimshaw. So uh, please join me. I will post some photos of my action figures. Absolutely. You can go to kenapsack.com for more information on my stuff, including my book, Web. We love Star Wars, other shows and events, and also at Force Center. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Force Center Pod. Uh, use the hashtag Star Wars Ranked to join this conversation. Like our Facebook page. We're on YouTube, and of, uh, of course, we've got the website, ForceCenterPod.Podomatic.Net, and Patreon, Joseph. And I know this isn't usually the main show, but, you know, we got, we're building some oh, goals yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are getting close to our next goal, which is a new theme song for this very show this for Star Wars show. Ranked. If we reach that, uh, mm-hmm. Ken will. Uh, be able to reach out to Tony Thaxton who's written all of our other great uh, mm-hmm. theme songs and work together like what are the sounds that will yeah. capture what happens here on this very show yeah I, I use this uh, this track so far that's kind of somber and uh, different and I like it I like it it's like a military march but we're gonna go a different direction ooh yeah get Tony's genius on that oh yeah so that's that go to patreon.com slash force center to support us there and also just like and subscribe and share that's a great way to support the show as well that's it for this week Star Wars has been ranked